What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the REL T9Xs. Before we get into it, if you're into audio and video or watching new movies, be sure to tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. The T9X is replacing the older T9i. Let's get it out of the box and see what's different. Inside the box, we get a power cord and one high-level cable. This is a fairly compact subwoofer weighing 45 pounds. I believe the older model was 41 pounds, so the new one's a little heftier. Size-wise, it measures 14.5 inches wide by 13.4 inches high by 15.5 inches deep. It looks to be a little shorter than the older model, but it's also a little wider. On the bottom is a 10-inch passive radiator, which should help this little guy with some deep extension. Behind the grill is a 10-inch fiber alloy driver with a rated response down to 27 hertz. I should mention that the grill attaches to the subwoofer via these nice quality steel pushpins. The enclosure has a very nice high gloss finish with the REL logo embedded on the top. Now whereas the older T9i had a boxy enclosure, this one's got curved edges for a softer and what I feel a much more attractive appearance. Let's not forget about the branding on the feet as well. Around the back is the 300 watt Class AB amplifier. There's an input for REL's wireless transmitter, the volume control for the high low level inputs, a phase switch, there's a variable crossover from 30 to 120 hertz, and the low level input is next to the LFE volume control. Beneath that are the high level and LFE inputs, and on the very bottom is the main power switch. There's also some REL branding on the back of the feet as well. That's a nice little touch. For setup, I've got the T9Xs hooked up to a Trinov Altitude processor and paired with some Procella speakers in my dedicated theater. I'll be playing demos off of a Zipidi media player and a Kaleidoscape. I went with the LFE inputs and set the crossover to 80Hz. I dialed in the subs using the phase control and set levels and distances in the processor. I didn't use any room correction since most folks aren't going to have an altitude, and I relied on the sub's own adjustments to blend everything together, as well as proper subwoofer placement. The first demo I threw in was Monster Hunter on 4K Blu-ray. This movie's got extreme levels of bass and is a true subwoofer test. Chief? Yeah. Yeah, bros. As a reference point, my normal subwoofers are dual 18s, so I'm very familiar with the type of extension all of these demos are capable of. During this particular scene, you're supposed to feel the room vibrate before Diablos comes busting out of the sand. With both T9Xs, I got a little taste of the vibration, but these little guys just don't have what it takes to truly vibrate my space. When the action picks up, you can totally feel how hard the impact of every giant footstep Diablos takes, which feels like a quick hard punch. It's tactile in the upper bass region, but comes up short down low. Next demo I threw in was The Greatest Showman on the Cladescape. I can't really play any musical clips, but the intro has impressive slam. Just like those giant footsteps in the previous demo, I feel this intro pushes these little drivers as hard as they're gonna go. They're impressively hard hitting given their size, and they're also quick with transient response during the half dozen musical numbers. They're quick on the drum beats and expanded the soundstage with subtle nuance that the main speakers can't pick up. Rels are known for their musical prowess, and they really shine for the greatest showman. Speaking of subtle nuance, Fury is the next demo we're gonna check out. I felt some of the explosions and the tanks driving by in the background sounded very lifelike. What you should be able to hear are the rumble of the tanks driving by in the surround channels while the subs piggyback off that and extend the soundstage. The T9s make it sound as if the tanks are a half mile away. 
It's a gentle tactile nudge that some larger subs and even smaller subs can't quite render cleanly without making the effect sound boomy. Now that we're talking about boominess, let's hear some boom. Like Rel's home theater centric subs, the 1508 and the 1205s, these guys can start and stop on a dime. The tank shots are percussive, quick, and don't linger after the effect ends. Now, unlike the 1508 and the 1205s, the T9Xs don't have the same body rock and tactile feel, meaning you're not going to feel it move your body. The bass it produces is audibly tight and clean, it's just not as impactful as having some larger drivers. And last but not least, let's try out Edge of Tomorrow. I think we all knew these little guys aren't hitting infrasonic levels, but they did a decent job of rattling my baseboard heaters. I could also hear them start to fall apart towards the end of the demo. I mean, there are larger subs that can't even do this demo justice, but hey, it doesn't hurt to try. Since these have RHEL's famous high-level inputs, I decided to hook these up to my two-channel setup with the NAD M33 and a pair of Focal number 1s. If you're running with a Class D amplifier, it's recommended you hook up the red wire to the positive and the yellow wire to the negative. The other end plugs into the subwoofer. To get this dialed in, you will have to set the level and the crossover manually. It helps if you have someone to help you out. Otherwise, you'll be running back and forth to your seat to listen for changes. The thing that you, the difference between like say um, audio file bass and, and home theater bass is you're, you're you're typically playing a lot more notes with audio file, and you want a sub that can keep up, be crisp, be sharp, um, lots of different layers on that. It, it it was an amazing sounding sub. I mean, yeah, very tactile as well. Yeah. It's not going to dig ultra low like a home theater sub is going to do. No. Yeah, so it's not going to... It's not going to shake you out of your seat while you're yeah. trying to listen to something. It's not, there's not a lot of that, what they call that, uh, that overrunning resonance where it's going to yeah. buzz. No no infrasonics with these little yeah, guys. Yeah. They're, they're only uh, 10 inches, so no single digits. I, I guarantee it. If you, if you go into a studio somewhere and they can play you the setup we have here, you will walk out with the speakers and the subs. As Bill mentioned, you want a sub that's going to integrate seamlessly with your speakers. There were times we couldn't tell if the subwoofers were on or if the bass was coming directly from the speakers until we walked up and turned off the subs. These were a very natural extension of the bookshelves. Since these were paired up to each speaker, it essentially turned these focales into full range towers with stereo bass. So if there was a kick drum in the right speaker, it felt and sounded like it was coming from that direction. As mentioned during the Greatest Showman demo, these are some quick, nimble subwoofers that can produce some excellent texture. Given their size, I could see pairing these up with some small bookshelves or some small towers. If you've got bigger, full-range speakers, this might not offer too much to augment their sound. But if you're tight for space and can't fit some large towers in there, then the T9s should elevate any small speaker. Swing by Nemo's channel for more on RELs in a two-channel setup. I did take a measurement in my room with both subs. Keep in mind, this is the response I got from my space and it's likely going to be different for yours. I was able to hit 98 dB at 30 Hz and it does drop off at the specified 27 Hz. At the time of this video, a single T9X is selling for $1500. I doubt this subwoofer would be the first on your list if you're shopping for some dedicated home theater subs. I mean there's a ton of other options out there at about the same price that either have more features or is much larger and in some cases have both. What I've come to find having these in my theater is the extra nuance and attack in every movie that I've watched. That being said, I did experience this at my normal listening levels. I found that if I push the volume closer to reference at say 75 dB, which is way louder than I would normally listen, I found that the little drivers weren't as dynamic as Rel's bigger 1508s, which happen to be only $300 more, and can be nearly as tactile as the T9s. It's not as nuanced, but it'll play louder and is more dynamic for huge action flicks. If you're looking for subwoofers that'll provide that body massaging bass or room shaking impact, the T9Xs also come short in that area as well. And I would say just go with the 1508s again. Where I feel the T9Xs fall would be for a dual purpose home theater slash two channel setup, 
or rather a two-channel slash home theater setup, with the main focus being on two-channel performance. Textures, layers, and fast attacking response for two-channel listening was some of the best that I've heard in my home. They can be aggressive for rock music and nuanced during live performances. And this all applies to home theater as well. It's just, if you're looking for huge, thunderous output for movie soundtracks, I'd say grab one of Rel's larger subs for that. Now I do think the T9Xs are a dual purpose performer and they should fit in well with most music and home theater setups. So those are my thoughts on the RHEL T9X subwoofers. Have you guys had any experience with a RHEL subwoofer? And if so, how do you think they perform for music and home theater? Leave a comment and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again in the next video.